The reputed leader of one of Mexico's most vicious drug gangs was behind bars today, but it was unclear just how much that will do to ease drug violence that has raged for years. A warning, some of the images in our story are disturbing. A Mexican newspaper headline this morning said it all. Intelligence action decapitates the Zetas. A macabre play, no doubt, on one of the gang's grisly, murderous methods. The man known as Z-40 was captured early Monday without a shot being fired in the violence-wracked border city of Nuevo Laredo, just across the Rio Grande from Laredo, Texas. Members of Mexico's armed forces detained Miguel Ángel Trevino Morales, 40 years old. He is accused of organized crime, homicide, crimes against health, torture, money laundering, and importing firearms normally used exclusively by the armed forces. In a trade marked by its brutality, the Zetas have earned a special reputation. Beyond the wanton killings of police, military, judges, politicians and civilians, Zetas have left a bloody trail of dead bodies, scattered in town squares or strung from bridges, and often left with profane narcomantas, messages to their rivals and to the Mexican public. Last summer, the NewsHour's Margaret Warner interviewed relatives of some of the 52 people killed in a casino torched by the Zetas in 2011. One woman would not even utter the word Zetas. If I tell you on an international network the name of the criminal organization, it's going to cost me my life. The Zetas were formed by former Mexican special forces as the security arm of another cartel. From there, they muscled their way to the top of the lucrative drug business and now control the trade in 11 Mexican states. They are perhaps most active in Tamaulipas, where Torreveño Morales was captured, Coahuila, and Nuevo León, home to Monterrey, Mexico's second largest city and its business capital. Indeed, the gang's influence is so widespread that many Mexicans caution today against expecting immediate improvement. No, yo creo que no con que agarre uno se va a terminar. I don't think it'll be over by catching one, because they arrest one and 20 crop up. On the other hand, the government also knows who they are, and I imagine, know where they are. It's believed that Trevino Morales' younger brother, Omar, will assume the Zetas' leadership. As such, he will largely oversee the eastern drug corridors into the United States. The Zetas' only real rival now, in terms of strength and breadth of operation, is the Sinaloa cartel, which controls much of the western Mexican routes into the U.S. The arrest of Trevenio Morales marks a victory for Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto, but the challenge remains daunting. His predecessor, Felipe Calderón, militarized the war against the cartels in 2006. Since then, at least 60,000 people have been killed. When the number of disappeared and presumed dead is added, that figure is more than 100,000. And for more, we're joined once again tonight by Alfredo Corchado, Mexico Bureau Chief for the Dallas Morning News. So how significant is this arrest? How big a figure is he? This is, this is a huge deal. I mean, I think a uh, few people, if, uh, I can't think of anyone else who defines the decade uh, like, like Trevino Morales as far as the violence, the headlines that we've got, gotten accustomed to in the United States and in Mexico. This man was largely responsible, he and his cohorts, uh, the CETAs, the paramilitary group all along the U.S.-Mexico border, but also some of the violence in, in the southwest, I mean, in, in the state of Texas. So uh, no shots were fired. What do we know so far about exactly how he was captured? This was, I think, the most surprising thing. Uh, he had told several people, uh, uh, associates and friends, uh, that he would never be caught alive that he would, uh, in fact, uh, it was known that he carried a bullet just in case they ever surrounded him, he would take uh, that bullet and kill himself. What we know is that uh, there was a chase, uh, a helicopter did a maneuver over the vehicle, stopped, and then suddenly uh, other vehicles show up. It was, uh, I think, a months-long investigation headed by the Mexican Marines with some help of, of U.S. intelligence. Well, so tell us a little bit more about this particular cartel. What kind of activities, and as you were starting to say, uh, what, uh, how deep a reach into the United States? Well, he was, I mean, it was much more than just a, a Mexican drug cartel. I mean, he was in charge of uh, the piracy, prostitution, human smuggling, uh, the, 
uh, anything that had, that made money and through the illicit route, uh, pay, it, it, Mr. Trevino, Trevino Morales and the Setas were in charge. He came of age a, as a criminal in, in Dallas, in North Texas, beginning in the early 1990s, went back to Nuevo Laredo where he worked for a, a drug cartel leader, washing cars, later he cleaned chimneys. And then his brother was a, a truck driver who, who would haul marijuana from Nuevo Laredo onto North Texas and uh, Cuarenta, uh, as, as he's known. Was, was the one who was uh, one of the guys who was hauling the marijuana from uh, Tamaulipas into the Texas market. Well, now, as to the key question of, of, about what happens now and how much this impacts the uh, cartel's ability to operate, what do we know about the cartel, its structure, its leadership? Can somebody like his brother step right in and things go on, or, or does this have an impact? Well, I mean, I think it's been significantly weakened, but I, I think that uh, it's, it's expected that Omar, uh, known as number 42, would try to fill in uh, the, the void. Uh, but it's also known that uh, other cartel, the Bertrán Leyva, who the Setas were associates with, uh, closely associated with Hector Bertrán Leyva, and the, uh, the Golf Cartel. The Golf Cartel, I think, will be the ones to, that are more interesting to watch in the, in the coming months because they're the ones who recruited the Setas as enforcers, and there's been a big rivalry. It's expected and it's feared that in the, next, in the weeks to come or months to come, the violence will spike as the uh, Golf Cartel tries to retake what they still claim is their own distribution route, which is the uh, No Loredo, Laredo, uh, route. I mean, it's one of the most lucrative routes in, in, in the entire U.S.-Mexico border. So people are expect this, you know, things to get bloody before uh, they, 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 they get calm again. Uh, well, that's what I was wondering, because how does this particular cartel fits into... There are others, we mentioned the Sinaloa, constantly in competition, I, I assume. And how, how does what happened today fit into the rest of that overall picture? I, I think the hope, if you talk to uh, Mexican authorities and U.S. authorities, is that whoever takes over in the end, because as long as you have U.S. demand for drugs, I mean, I, the, 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 there'll be a flow. But the, the hope is that uh, whoever takes over is much more of a business-minded leader and not a vicious person like uh, Trevino Morales has been over the years. Now, this was also the first big arrest or killing under the still relatively new administration of uh, President Peña Nieto. He's promised, he came into office promising a different strategy, uh, not, it's not so much a warlike approach. So what is this? Does this tell us something about that? Well, you know, he's been in office uh, six, seven months. It, it's too early to tell. Uh, what people keep insisting is that this is not necessarily an administration victory, but more of the Mexican Marines. But it also says that uh, Peña Nieto came in promising to lower violence and the capture of Trevino Maras, I think, will go a long ways into achieving that goal, at least uh, in, in, in the short term. I mean, again, they're expecting uh, a lot of violence in, in the weeks to come, months to come, but I think this arrest, this capture, uh, long term, people hope will, well, will somehow calm things uh, along the U.S. Mexican border and things will resume in, in, at a slower pace. Uh, the bloodshed will, will come down. And for a lot of journalists, it's also a big victory because he was able to control so many regions that he basically forced them into silence and, and censorship. So a lot of people are, are, are breathing a sigh of relief, but they also know that uh, there's still a lot more to, to go before uh, they can actually uh, claim and sing victory. And let me just ask you very briefly, if you could, the, the president had put some limitations, Mexico's president had put some limitations on U.S. operations. Uh, is there anything known about whether the U.S. played any role in providing information or, or otherwise in this arrest? Well, we've been told that the U.S. Uh, did play a role in, in the intelligence, and I think we can also kind of see that uh, the 12 years under the uh, opposition party, that they were able to, that, that a lot of the contacts in the regional level, at the local level, uh, continue in spite of uh, trying to limit the role of the United States. I mean, uh, from everyone that we talked to today, uh, there was a, a, a role of the, of the U.S. government. Although it's, it's understandable, I think, uh, I think at least on the, US, on the United States side, they're, they're trying to downplay that as much as possible. All right, Alfredo Corchado of the Dallas Morning News from Mexico City. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jeff.